Welcome back to AP Psychology in under 3 minutes. No time for intros, let's get into it. Alright, this video covers the brain. This means that there will be a lot of parts to memorize, so I already apologize. We'll start with the brainstem, the most basic structure. It controls automatic survival functions. Within it, the medulla regulates breathing and heart rate. Just above it is the reticular activating system, which is involved in arousal, voluntary movement, and aspects of learning, cognition, and emotion. The cerebellum, or quote, little brain, coordinates muscle movement, balance, and some types of procedural learning. Now here's where things get fun. The cerebral cortex is the outer layer of the brain, divided into two hemispheres. Inside it is the limbic system, which includes the thalamus, which is the relay station for sensory information, the hypothalamus, which regulates hunger, thirst, body temperature, sexual behavior, and it communicates with the pituitary gland to release hormones, the hippocampus, which forms new memories, and the amygdala, which processes emotional things like fear and aggression. The corpus callosum is the thing that connects the two hemispheres, allowing them to communicate. Each hemisphere has four lobes within it. Occipital lobes located at the back process vision. Temporal lobes located on the sides process auditory information and language. Parietal lobes near the crown of the head handle sensory input and contain the somatosensory cortex, which processes touch. And frontal lobes behind the forehead control higher order thinking and executive functioning in the prefrontal cortex and voluntary movement through the motor cortex. Believe it or not, some people with extreme epilepsy have to get their corpus callosum separated. When research was done on these people, it revealed differences between between the two hemispheres. We'll only focus on the left hemisphere, which is usually dominant for language. Within it, Broca's area produces speech, while Wernicke's area comprehends it. Damage to either area causes something known as aphasia. The way researchers found this out was actually very interesting, and I urge you to watch the video yourself, link in description. The brain also does something called plasticity, which is the ability to rewire or form new connections so that other areas can sometimes take over functions of a damaged region, especially early in life. Finally, how do we know all of this? How is some idiot named Max Allen who barely got an A- in his high school biology class able to sit here and teach you all this? The answer is through different research methods. Let's go over them. EEGs measure electrical activity. FMRIs show active brain regions through blood flow. Case studies like Phineas Gage, or better known as the man with a metal rod in his head, highlight how damage changes behavior. And finally, lesioning or surgical procedures have been used to examine specific functions of the brain. Alright, I have officially reviewed the entire brain, for the most part. On the screen now are all of the parts along with the definitions I went over in this video. And now, try the AP style questions on the screen. Pause now. I'll put the answers on the screen now. I will see you in the next one.